with me to the book of Genesis we left off there last night talking about the favor of God how God's favor I want you all to know that I am in the midst of a new assignment from the Lord and right now I believe that in order to walk in the office of the prophetic it is very important that you understand what mood the Spirit of the Lord is responding out of the Bible tells us that when we got when they got to the point where they began to take the Lord's Supper it said that many are sleeping because they have not properly discerned the body of Christ in other words they had not dissected and spiritually discerned the power of what they were swallowing what they were taking in so instead of taking it in to a spiritual and a purified body they they sat in carnality and received something that was spiritual is that is that something and so it applies to us in this building tonight and that's why your minds and your spirit have to be set properly because you cannot sit in the house of the Lord and think that you're going to comprehend what the Lord is saying with your carnal mind because if you take the Word of God in with your carnal mind the minute somebody nudge you the wrong way or jump up and say hallelujah and slap you in the back of your head by accident and shift your weave to the left when they sold it to the right you gonna change your mind about what you think about what's happening in here yeah yeah I'm telling the truth in here <laughs> so it's got to be for your spirits and you got to understand that in order for me to digest what the Lord wants to say to me spiritually I must become spiritual and that's why the Bible requires that we walk in the spirit that we may do mine pay attention to become obedient to the spirit and the reason why we cannot obey the spirit because we don't walk in the spirit can I just teach this tonight you have to begin to and watch this it is going to be a decision it is not and let me help somebody in here that thinks that well the anointing is going to come on me and God going to know me and I just want you Lord to just help me to be spiritual that's not how that works it is a decision where carnality is presented to you and spirituality is presented to you but you are molded and made with your own self will so you decide some of y'all don't believe that that's the truth you can get up in the morning and decide I'm going to be spiritual and the minute you make the decision to become spiritual the anointing of God gravitates to your decision see anytime you are being confronted by the enemy and the enemy is actually running rapid in your life then you are on the wrong side of spirituality because let me help you with something the devil cannot run rapid in your life even Satan is on an assignment by God oh okay let me just break that down see he's an angel and one thing about God he's not an Indian giver God doesn't call us to preach and then because I leave here tonight and go get me a bottle of alcohol and get drunk then the Lord say now nah, you ain't no preacher no more I changed my mind because you done made me mad I'm just a drunk preacher all right y'all <laughs> why you got prostitutes out there on the corner uh, full of hospitality because see prostitutes and, and, and folk that, 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 that sleep around and all that kind of stuff they make the best the best ushers 
and the best are, are past this age and all that because they are they were they were born to be an assistant they were born to preach that's why you got drug addicts out there on the corner hustling and got a and got a five hundred dollar day habit and, and don't never miss fulfilling their habit because they are anointed they gift is to preach See, when you get saved, the Lord is not going to take what he has allowed you to be born to be and change you into something else. See, that's why a lot of y'all think that, well, I, I got saved when I was in the church, honey. I was just, child, I was just cut you. When I was out there in the streets, honey, I'll cut you out. I'll go off on you. All that. Honey, I didn't take no mess from nobody. Child, I, look, I had it going on. Didn't nobody jump in my face. Well, see, then you get saved and think the Lord done called you to sit on your seat and just be little innocent sister, sister Watermiller, that ain't got much to say. Listen, most of your intercessors and people that will fight the devil and won't take no mess off the devil, they had a fighting spirit when they was in the world. Now God ain't made you a warrior. Listen, you ain't out there fighting and ain't gonna come in here and get scared. Why do you think I'm the way I am? Because I will fight in a minute. I don't care what size you were. I wasn't scared of nobody. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. So when the Lord saved me, he said, now I'm going to take that same personality and I'm going to use it and refine it and turn it on the devil. See, the way you can pay the devil back for all the years that he robbed from you, the way you served him, come on in here and serve God. Come in here and get all pitiful. Tell me, well, you know, I just want you to know what they doing to me. I mean, my 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 little brother was was really really my 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 heart. He, he still is. He's the only brother that I have, and he was the baby of the family. And he would always, you know, everywhere I go, he wanted to be with me. He wanted to be. And then he mother would buy him stuff, and he got a basketball one day and went to the basketball court, and he was out there just shooting basketball and some of the the, the, the the big fellas came out there and, and said we want to use your ball because they didn't have no ball and then so they said well you let us use your ball and after a while we're going to let you play so they got his ball kept playing with it kept playing with it kept playing with it and when he wanted to get his ball they pushed him down and so he, he came home I was washing dishes he came home crying and I heard him coming up in the doorway and I said what's wrong what's wrong he said they took my ball they got my ball they pushed me down and I'm just I'm just and I look I, I didn't say a word I went downstairs to the basement and got a baseball bat and said, come on, we're going back to the pride. We're going to get your ball. <laughs> and see, back then, back then, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't walk up to all them fellas out there on the basketball court and say, y'all got my brother's ball? Who got my brother's ball? I, no, I didn't give no chance to say. I just shut my eyes and took that bat and went in the crowd. When I opened my eyes and came to, my brother had his basketball and a couple of them was on the ground holding their knees. And see, then after that, I got a reputation. Don't mess with that boy right there because his sister crazy. Come on, y'all. And the reason why the enemy is all up in your house and all over your kids and all in your finances because you ain't did nothing to prove to the devil, I'm crazy. I'm crazy in the Holy Ghost. you think you messing with I didn't take no mess in the streets and I'm not taking no mess in the church oh y'all better say something in here you ain't got to do nothing but stand your ground but see some of us don't know what the Lord has anointed us to be because all we're thinking about is, well, I'm saved and I, I just, I, I just, I, I don't know what God want me to do. Well, what do we want me to do? Well, ask yourself, the, what did you do when you wasn't saved? If you was a hustler and you was a person that got on the street and raised money for drugs, then get on in here and get in the Bible and, 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 get, and back up pastor and get on the pastor's aid and keep on hustling and raise some money so we can build a church. Y'all ain't saying that. See, I beg the difference when people start talking about, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Can you pray for me that God will tell you what it is that I'm supposed to do? Because I don't know what my call is. What was you doing before you got saved? Oh, y'all.
y'all ain't gonna say that I know it's the truth so when we start talking about people of God the favor of God you got to understand that the favor of God have been upon your life when you was a drunk when you was a prostitute when you didn't have yourself together well you said a prophet's by now how can that be true you got in church didn't you you didn't die out there did you that's the favor of God that allowed you to walk contrary to his will but he kept you in your right mind when he got ready for you he called your name and he gave you the grace to hear him call you and in the midst of junk that you done been through when the devil should have took your life the Lord kept his favor on you and now you in here shouting over what you should have died from don't tell me you ain't got no favor some of y'all in there used to date other folk husband and you ain't dead yet that's favor baby Some of y'all done took enough drugs to kill somebody and you too. That's favor, honey. Stuff that some of you all done been through. Look, you should have been had a nervous breakdown in a crazy house. And you sitting up here still able to praise God. And you got the audacity to let the devil make you think that the favor of God ain't on your life. Honey, he's a liar. You are favored. Matter of fact, you are highly favored of the Lord. Ain't get ready to sit in here and, 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 and watch this, watch this, and be pitiful because the devil done threw you a curb and stuff you done going through. Let me help y'all with something. A lot of stuff that you're going through right now, it ain't worse than where you came from. Because you was on your way to hell. Come on here, somebody. But the enemy will make you sit and think about what he doing and all of what's going on when you need to understand that he is an angel he is a fallen angel okay let me break that down to you when God created angels the book of Psalms says though I uh, speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love it profit me nothing but guess what the tongue of men and of angels watch this the tongue of men and of angels men have a language that God gave them whatever nationality he ushered you in to be but the but the but the language of the angels they have no language their language is the voice of God because they're messengers they're not created separate from God they're just an image that God speaks through and he uses understand that you got to understand that an angel can't jump out and tell you nothing without God they have nothing to say unless God tells them to say stuff that's why I got a problem with some of y'all that talk about I believe in my angel I wear my angel well he can't do that unless God tell him to folk got all these little fat angels all in their house and little baby angels what can a baby do if I'm gonna put an angel in my house I'm gonna put a seven foot image angel in my house not no little fat baby that look like he need to be on a diet laying on his side with his stomach hanging over Y'all ain't saying that. If, if I'm going to have an angel, he's going to be a big old tall, seven foot, sitting in my foyer. With a sword drew. With blood dripping off the end of the sword. Y'all ain't saying nothing. See, angels are messengers. Which means they hear a word from God and they carry that word to wherever the person is going to. Angels are completely governed and subjected to the voice of God. So when you are a fallen angel, you don't become independent. See, when the enemy got ready to mess with Job, he had to get parameters. God said, you can do this, but you can't do that. You can do this, but you can't do that. You can do this, but you can't do this. And you can only stay this long. And you can only torment him for this long. And then you got to go. Well, God ain't changed his method. When the enemy comes to us, he's on an assignment. He had to ask God, can I mess with pastor? Yep, you can do this. You can do that. You can do that. You can only stay this long. You can only do this and that and that and that. And then you threw. See, y'all think the devil just having his way. He ain't having his way. 
because whatever the enemy is attacking us with watch this now it is for the benefit of purifying us see the devil attacks us so God can allow to surface those hidden things that are in us that is not like him so actually when the enemy mess with you you ought to go to praising God because the only way that you can know that you're being purified is when what's in you is exposed oh how many know I'm just telling the truth right there so when we talk about Satan, I think that my personal opinion is that we give him more credit than what he is due. And I'm going to say this, especially in the, the, the African American churches. We have been raised to talk about the devil. Satan is a lie. Satan did this. Satan did this. Devil, you a lie. Satan, I plead the blood. Satan, Satan, Satan. The devil did this. The devil, you know so and so son got shot. That wasn't nothing but the devil. You know her daughter pregnant. That wasn't nothing but the devil. And the reason why we are raised to be fearful of the devil is because we have not been trained to know the kind of God that we serve. And we concentrate more on the devil. And that's why he's so magnified. But if we begin as a people to begin to study and cultivate our minds in the awesomeness of the God that we serve, then we would realize that Satan is no match for the God that lives in us. He's no match for the world that's in our bellies. See, that's just something that we quote. Great is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You don't believe that. You don't believe that. You can't possibly believe that, 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 that I'm talking about the God that, that, that stepped out on nothing. Baby, he was suspended in mid-air, standing on nothing. And all he did was open up his mouth. Do you, wait a minute, let me just show you something. Let me show you something. Turn with me to Genesis 1 right quick. I want to show you something before I, before, I, before I break this thing down. Listen to me, before I. Before I break it down, that's Ebonics, y'all hear me. Before I, before I break it down. Some of y'all saying before you break, no, before I, before I break it down. Because <laughs> I be trying, I ain't going to change y'all, you know, you know. You know what I'm saying. Genesis 1 and 3, everybody read that with me. Genesis 1 and 3, read that. And God said, read, wait, wait, hold it, hold it. Genesis 1 and 3 again. And God said. Read 1 and 6. Go to 9. Go to 11. Go to 14. Go to 20. Go to 24. Go to 26. And go to 29. He never did anything. He said it. Hello, somebody. And if the Lord can get the people that he has created, that he has decided to take up an abode in, if he can get you to agree and say with your mouth what is sitting in your belly, then the same God that created the earth can create a house for you when you can't even pay your light bill. Do y'all hear what I'm saying in here? God, I wish I had a church in here tonight. Do you realize what I'm saying to you? That, that, that your Johnny can be cutting up like 40 going north and failing all his grace and just disobedient. And you can get in that Bible and read one scripture that said, and the fruit of my body shall be blessed. And you can begin to confess that with your mouth and out of your mouth will come a sword that will cut off of Johnny, everything that's not like God, the same power that was in Genesis is sitting in your belly. You got to open up your mouth and start quoting that Bible. Y'all, let me teach this thing. I feel this thing tonight. Pass this on me tonight. I feel that thing tonight. So now, okay, what is, what is, what is, 
what is what is the word say when I see stuff going on in my ministry the only thing that I have to hold on to is what God said see y'all ain't y'all Y'all got to understand that. Have anybody in this place tonight ever got a word from the Lord? No, no, no. I ain't talking about your imagination. I'm talking about a show enough word from the Lord. Well, see, you don't know what you're harboring. You don't know what's lying on the inside. When you get a word from the Lord, the Bible said that I'm not a man that I should lie, neither the son of man that I should repent. If I spoke it, honey, I'm going to bring that thing to pass. And ain't nothing the devil can do about it. Because once I say it, I have paid the way and it's got to come to pass. He said, listen, listen. He didn't say I can't. Listen, he didn't say I won't lie. He said I can't lie. Can I teach tonight? See, but see, this is the problem. Now watch this, watch this, watch. We don't understand to shun the method of a miracle. Okay, name that take this. All right, I just the method of a miracle. Because we don't understand the process of what happens because we start dancing, watch this, on the word. But as soon as something comes to contradict that word, we give up and say, maybe God didn't say it then. Well, maybe, well just maybe the Lord. And then we said, you know what God said? That was my house. But you know what? The enemy got in it and then they sold it. But that's all right. I'm just going to be encouraged for another house. Okay, well, you be encouraged then you just hold on because when God told me that my house that I live in now was my house I, I drove out there at about one o'clock in the morning and I, I snuck in the backyard because I read over in the book of Joshua where it says that wheresoever the soles of your feet shall tread I'm gonna give it to you y'all don't believe in y'all Bible Y'all don't believe in y'all Bible. Y'all just care because it's got a cute case. But I'm going to tell you something. I got out of my out of my car and I jumped back there in that backyard. And I know them folk was in that house sleep. And then I just started walking across the backyard going, Hada -da -da -bo -sha -da. God, you said it. You said in your word that this was my house. You told me that if I live right, that you wouldn't behold nothing from them that walketh up right before you. God, you said that the wealth of the world was laid up for the just. You said to the sinner man, you give him the power to store up worth that you may take it from him and give it to those that please God. I begin to quote that Bible and watch this. As I begin to quote the word the next thing that happened I got a phone call that said we sold the house and right then the devil said now nah, look at you you looking like a fool now dancing all out there in them folk yard and they done sold the house and they said we decided that somebody else outbidded you and you done lost the deal and you could have your down payment back and I said all right that was February 28th I went on about my business pastor but you know what every time I would drive by that street I would look at that house and say that's my house to help somebody here tonight I said that's my house my girlfriend said well somebody else done bought it they gonna have to move cause that's my house I stood on the word because I understood the method of a miracle now let me tell you what happened about maybe almost eight months later my phone rang and it was the owner of the house and she said is this Miss Bynum I said yes it is she said this is Miss Sulo I said how are you she said well I'm calling you and I interrupted her and said to tell me that it's time for me to buy my house she said yeah we went to close on yesterday and something came up on that woman's credit report that she can't fix and as a matter of fact we'll take another twenty thousand dollars off the house if you still want it y'all better come over here and say something and listen
Listen, one year later, February 28th, one year later, I moved into my house because when I knew what God had said, I didn't let the enemy stagger my faith. The Bible said Abraham received the promise of God because he staggered not at the word of God. Okay, let me show you something. Let me show you something. Now go with me to Genesis, Genesis uh, uh, 15. I want to show you something right quick. All I need is one person to say, teach me. And I'll teach you. I'll teach you. I'll teach you. Actually, 15 and 1. You got it? You got it? You got it? You got it? Okay, watch this. It says, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision saying, Fear not. Number one, write that down. Fear not. Write it down, boo. Write it down. Come on, pumpkin. Write it down. <laughs> Some of y'all just saying, mm hmm. No, I didn't say, mm hmm. I said, because the devil tonight has to recognize your handwriting. Y'all ain't saying nothing because see the reason why I said write it down because a buck or two says write the vision and make it plain. So I don't care if you got to pull out a piece of tissue. I said write it down. You got to write it down so when the enemy come and you can't talk and he done hit you with so much warfare to tears are running down your face. You can run and get your notes and can't even say them. Say You better tell the devil, you better look at what I wrote. I know I can't say that right now because I know you got tears running down my face, but you better read my notes. Oh, come on here, somebody. He said, fear not. Now, why can he, why can God give you a word that says, fear not? The reason why the Lord is bringing this word tonight that says fear not because it is the method and the principle of God, pastor, to always affix a word to our spirit that is going to counter attack the attack. So he knows that fear is coming. But if he puts fear not in your spirit, when fear gets there, the assignment of fear cannot overtake you because the fear not is going to lift up a standard against fear. Have you ever been going down the street? The Holy Ghost said, Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Because he knows discouragement is coming. But by the time discouragement gets there, be encouraged is already there. Have you ever heard the Lord tell you, rejoice? He knows that something is coming that's going to cause you to not to want to rejoice. But you've already been commanded by God to rejoice. So when he says to Abram, fear not, he knew fear was coming. And he did two things. He spoke it and he showed him. That's what the Bible said without a vision, people perish. And that's why I understand this tonight. I'm, I'm telling you, y'all gonna get some miracles. Y'all just gonna be so excited. See, right now, everybody believe in God for a house, everybody believe in God for a car, everybody believe in God for Junior to be saved, and June Bug them to come home and, 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 and booking them to stop cutting up and put them guns down, and all that stuff that we're going through in our families and stuff. What you got to do is you got to see booking them saved. See, you gotta get a picture in your mouth. You got to visualize yourself cooking in that kitchen. You got to see yourself driving that car. Oh God, I wish I had somebody in here. See, God done already said it, but he cannot begin to bring it to pass until you see yourself. Because once you see yourself, you will not perish because you got a vision. can mess with you all day long mama but can't nobody tell you up and what you saw see I used to see myself in that house 
walking around, praying, cooking. I said, okay, I got a vision. Sometimes when you're a pastor, you got to see your building. You got to see it. You got to see that thing coming to pass. When you're a mother, you got to see your child preaching and prophesying and speaking in tongues. Y'all listen to this now. He said, fear not. Watch this. He said, because I am thy shield and thy exceeding great what? Okay. Fear not. Next thing you got to know is he is your shield. Okay, y'all. Okay, you got to see this now. You got to see me. Y'all give me that Archie Bunker look like. You got to, watch this. You got to visualize God has given me a word. And I can see myself doing it. But all of a sudden I see a shield that is standing in front of me. That no matter what the devil tries to do to me. Well, listen, stop that. That's, let's see some of y'all saying this. Well, you know, that offended me. And the devil wounded me. And he hurt me. See, understand stuff. Stuff, that sh stuff that's hitting your spirit should be hitting your shield. He said, I am your shield. And watch this. And I am your reward. I don't think you get that. See, because to the Levites, he said to the Levites, y'all ain't got no portion. He said, I am your portion. So whenever you read the Lord said, I am your reward, that means it's a guaranteed promise that is coming through. Because you're not waiting on somebody to give it to you. You already got it because anytime you live right, you're going to be rewarded. And if the Lord is your reward, it's a guaranteed promise. He is my reward. Oh, watch this, saints. Now watch this. Watch this. No, I'm telling you. And Abram said, Lord God, what would thou give me? Seeing I go childless. Now watch this, y'all. He said, he said, Lord, what wilt thou give me? And I'm going to paraphrase this. Watch, watch this. Lord, what would thou give me? Because we don't, we don't have the vision yet. Lord, what would thou give me? Seeing I go childless. He did not say, Lord, give me a child. He said, what will thou give me seeing that I go childless? Now the revelation in that is what he was releasing God to do was this. I am childless, but because I know you the awesome God that you are, there is something that you can give me to make me forget that I ain't got no child. So just in case you don't give me a child, what will you give me? <laughs> Y'all better say something in here. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God. Come on here, somebody. See, look at this. Look at this. You got to look at this. Look at this. See, here you go. Here you go. Lord, I want a car. Please, Jesus. Please give me a car. No, this is how you pray. Lord, what will thou give me being that I have no car? Because while you asking God for a Dodge and you asking God for a Chevy, he might be wanting to give you a brand new 1999 limousine and a driver that comes along with it, y'all ain't saying. So you better stop limiting God and say, God, I ain't got no car, but what will you give me? What is it that is in your infinite mind? Okay, because remember what he said, that my God, my God, remember when he said this, get this, my God is able to do exceeding, exceeding, exceeding. That means there is not a brain cell in your mind that can comprehend the exceedingness of God. So while you asking God for stuff, you got to make sure of this, that you're not asking him for stuff from your unpurged side. Because you are asking God for what your flesh desire when God says, if you just give me five more years to work on you, you really Bentley level while you asking me for a taxi. Come on, somebody. You got to see this thing. You got to make sure that you're not asking God for what you think you can have. And you're not asking God from the realm of his exceeding greatness. So before you start begging for 
a car and telling God what kind, you better ask God what is your will. Because while you're asking God for a Dodge, he may have in mind to give you a Mercedes that you ain't even got to pay for. Give me. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. Watch this. This is this is this is this is this is such a blessing to my life. Being that I am childless, then he says, and Abram said, Behold to me, thou hast given me no seed. He did not say, Thou hast given me. You get me to learn a method here that's gonna bless you. He didn't say, thou has given me no child. He said, thou has given me no seed because in a seed is never a singular anything. In a seed, in a apple seed is never just an apple. In a corn seed, is never just one kernel. You plant a corn seed, you're going to get an ear. You're going to get a bushel. Are you hearing what I'm saying, y'all? You plant an apple seed, and you're going to get a tree. So Abram was setting an example for us to stop asking God for individual things and start asking God for seed. Because if you ever plant seed, you're going to get a whole lot of stuff. God, I wish I had a church in here that want to go with me tonight. He, okay, let me explain this to you. If you ask the Lord for seed, come on, get me, get me, get me. You ask him for seed. The person that has the seed is always the controller of the outcome. You better look at this. Why do you all think, now this is, this is, this right here going to hurt some people. Why do you all think that men are classified as the authority and the head? Because the child really lies in him. We are, watch this, we are developers to the point that if you ever plant a seed in a woman, she'll give you back a baby. Follow this. So the man has the seed. Abram asks God for seed. Now, prophet is about to prove that. Why do you think that God turned the whole entire church into a female gender and called himself the husband? Because if he ever put seed into the church, she gon' multiply and grow. Oh, come on, get somebody. So, so what I'm trying to say to y'all is this. You can't help but to get stuff. You can't help but to be blessed because you are sitting in the female gender of the nature of God, which means every time the anointing pours out in the house, every time anybody preaches and it gets in your belly, you are going to take that seed and multiply and multiply and multiply and multiply and multiply. And multiply. Watch this. Sit down. I got to teach this. Got to teach this. Got to teach this. Got to teach this, y'all. Got to teach this. He says, he says, okay, somebody said, well what, well, what else is so important about the seed? Because 
the Bible says this he giveth seed to the soul he said just as the rain come down and pours and water the earth in other words he's saying to us just as sure as the rain is going to come down and water the earth it is of an assurity that I will did you get that just as sure as you know it's going to rain when it start raining and that the rain waters the earth that is as guaranteed as it's going to be that I'm going to give seed to the sower and bread to the eater now watch this seed to the sower see a lawyer a lawyer practices law for a living a doctor practices medicine for a living hello so in order for you to be guaranteed that you will never be left without money without seed because when you become a sower which is a person that practices sowing for a living God will always give you seed y'all ain't gonna say nothing in here y'all ain't gonna say nothing in here see you will never go away from church hungry and not fed the word of God because he said I'm guaranteeing you that I'm going to give bread to people that practices eating for a living now I gotta let that sit for a while because some of y'all ain't got that Just let that sink in your mind when you always say, well, I want God to pray for me. I want you to pray for my finances because I need a financial breakthrough. Mm, 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 mm. You need to make a decision to become a sower. Because when I become a sower, I am guaranteed to always have seed because he said in his word that I give seed to a sower. Can I teach this, y'all? See, the person that has seed is the controller. Okay, let me ask you this. Why do you think when, when Isaac got to be of some age and the Lord called for him to make Abraham to, Abraham to make Isaac a sacrifice, Sarah couldn't walk him up the hill because he was Sarah's son, but he was Isaac. He was Abraham's seed. And whoever gives the seed is a person that controls okay y'all I can't say that to y'all because y'all ain't ready for that one Sarah could not walk him up that hill because she was his son but she was Abraham's seed and it was his seed it was watch this he it was his that's why many of y'all always say I just thank the Lord cause honey we ought to just shout tonight because we the seed of Abraham you don't even know what you're talking about because when you are the seed of Abraham then you will understand that everything about your life was meant to be planted so see when Isaac began to go up that hill with Abraham Abraham took his seed and Abraham was starting a trend I understand some see if you notice that that trend kept going because Abraham walked Isaac up there he sacrificed his seed which was it was a sacrifice because it was not Ishmael Ishmael the blessing it was Isaac the promise so he had walked the promise of the only promise the only promise that he had he walked it up there and then God couldn't break the trend so when he got ready to save his people from their sin he sacrificed his only son and then his only son sacrificed and gave his only life do y'all get what I'm saying so that's why I can't understand the concept of people that says I'm the seed of Abraham but they stingy and they don't want to give because what you are is a church goer because you cannot break the cycle the pattern is you can always sow your sacrifice get your head down here because I'm gonna show you something go 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 watch this I want you to go to go to number four and behold, are y'all with me? Yeah. Uh-uh, that sounded a little weak. Because yeah. I can't shout you. I got to give you the method of a miracle. Because if I ever get this in your spirit, it ain't nothing that the devil will ever be able to do to shake nothing that God has told you. Because you're going to know all the signs of what's supposed to happen after the word. Do y'all get what I'm saying? Yeah. He said here, and 
behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. What you have, watch this, watch this, watch this. Your own bowels shall be your heir. What you are able, watch this, the mess that you are able to take while waiting on your miracle is going to come out of your bowels. All right then, all right then, all right then. Come on, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. That's why the minute God gives you a word, it has to be attacked. It's because he promised that the miracle is going to come out of what you're able to digest. Did y'all, I mean, did, do you get that? So the first thing that's going to happen after you get your word is the enemy is going to attack you in some kind of way. So when the attack comes, whether it's on your body, whether it's with your husband, whether it's with your kids, digest it. Uh -huh. Tell the devil, come on, come on, okay. I know what's going on here. I'm going to bless God because I got to digest this. Because if I don't, my miracle won't come because the Bible said it's coming out of my bowels. And in order for it to get in my bowels, there's some stuff I'm going to have to swallow. There's some stuff that you're going to have to go through and keep your mouth shut. There's some lies that's going to be told on you that you're going to have to shout through. Y'all ain't saying nothing. There's some mess that's going to happen that you ain't going to be able to tell your side. They're going to get in your face and ask you what happened. And the Holy Ghost is going to say, shut your mouth. Shut your mouth right now. And you're going to be crying saying, but God, that ain't the way it happened. And God is going to tell you. He's going to remind you of this word. Digest it. Digest it. Digest it. Because when it get in your body, it's creating a miracle. Because your breakthrough is coming out of your bowels. Shut your mouth and take it. Get on your face. If you got to cry all night, don't open up your mouth. You ain't got to defend yourself. And the reason why you don't not listen, you don't have to defend yourself because touch somebody and say, because I'm working on a miracle, baby. I'm working on a miracle. So I'm, I'm, see, see, I'm working on a miracle here. And see, your friend's going to say, if I was you, I wouldn't take that. If I was you, honey, I'd read this. If I was you, I'd tell pastor really what happened. No, nah, baby, I'm working on something. I'm working on a miracle here. Honey, I'm about to push something out after a while. You keep on looking at me. Keep on watching me. Oh, yeah, I know I'm stinking right now. I know it stink, but out of the stink is coming my miracle. Somebody go to praising God right there. See, wait a minute. Right there, when I said, praise God, you don't understand. Now, I'm the doctor, so you got to follow my instructions. When I said, praise the Lord, what the Holy Ghost is getting me to do is lock what I just said in your spirit as a permanent fixture. So when the enemy come, he's not going to be able to shake you. Now, praise the Lord. Because your praise is going to help you to digest the mess. Okay, y'all sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down. Your praise is going to help you digest the mess. Y'all didn't hear what I said. I said your praise is going to help you. The Spirit of God, like water, is going to wash the lumps out of your throat. The Spirit of God, like water, is going to mash it down. And water purifies. And water, come on somebody, water oxidizes the body. If you feel like what you're going through, you're about to faint along the way. I dare you to start praising God. Because the Spirit of the Lord is going to oxidize you. It's going to energize you. It's going to elevate you. It's going to promote you. Come on, a few more seconds, praise it. Come on, come on. Take 
on your strength. Take on your strength. Come on, you gotta praise him. What you saying to the devil in your praise? That I got a secret now. I know exactly what you're trying to do. You try to mess my mind up. You try to throw my focus off. But I'm gonna keep my mind fixed on the word of God. I'm gonna keep my mind fixed on what the Lord said. Jerry, you a liar. Devil, you a liar. You won't take my miracle. You won't take my blessing. You won't take it. Sit down, sit down. Sit down. Just lean over and just tell your neighbor. Just say, child, I'm sorry to jump all over you like that. But, but I'm getting my stuff back. Your way. The 
devil can't stop this one. It's a sure miracle. It's a sure breakthrough. And it shall come to pass. And the victory is yours. 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 I hear the Holy Ghost saying, I had to turn the devil on you so I can give you the victory in his face. To shine up the victory is yours. It is yours. It is yours. The Holy Ghost said, the devil heated up the battle, but I'm going to give you the victory in his face. And I can hear, and I can hear somebody in this place tonight saying, but you don't know my warfare. You don't know why. You don't know what I'm going through. But I hear the Lord saying, I allowed the enemy to turn up the heat. I allowed the enemy to stand in your face because I'm going to give you the victory right in the face of the enemy. Somebody give him praise. Y'all don't understand. Y'all sit down, let me tell you this. Sit down, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. And I don't know if you know this or not, but to every victory, you don't know this, but to every victory that's about to happen in your life, for every victory party that you are about to have, know this, that the devil is invited. <laughs> He got to be there. He got to be standing right in the midst of your situation. So when God give you the victory, he got to know what happened. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He got to be there so you can watch him come down. Oh my. He got to be there so you can watch God take his head off. Uh. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Come on here, somebody. You better know that he's your rod and he's your staff, and he's comforting you. You better know that when the enemy comes in like a flood, do you get that he gotta come in? Tell somebody he gotta come in, because when the standard goes up, he gotta see it, to be reminded that you are a child of God. Y'all sit down. Sit down. Watch this. Y'all let me finish my lesson. Let me finish my lesson. He do that. Can't wait till y'all get y'all breath. Can't wait till y'all just digest that thing. See, now you understand why the devil got to cut up. Come on here, y'all. You understand that now, right? That the only way that you got proof that God said it, the devil got to show up. And let me help you with something. Before the victory comes, it's like the Lord gives you the rock and a slingshot. Watch this. And though the victory rock is going a mile in front of you, you got to always pull it back to give it power to go forward. So in order for you to know that God going to do what he said he going to do, he gives you the rock and then he allows the enemy to look like he pulling you backwards but all he doing is pulling you back oh. 
Watch this, watch this, watch the next step to a method of miracle. See, that's why whenever, whenever you get to that point, then the seventh verse says, seven verse, and he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur. See, the reason why you know that God gonna do it, because while the devil is pulling on the camp, and he pulling that thing and holding it, and it seems like you can't take no more, and it seems like you get ready to give up, you will hear the Lord whisper and say, didn't I do this before? Didn't I bring you out before? Didn't I heal your body before? Y'all come on here somebody He gotta always remind you While the devil got a hold to your blessing He'll go back and tell you This ain't nothing for me baby I done did this before Remember, 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 remember Remember when you was living in projects Now look at you Remember, remember, remember Remember when you had a break, a breakdown Now look at your mind Remember, remember when you was a drug addict Now look at what I done did for you Remember, remember Come on, come on If I did it for you then I'ma do it again I'ma do it again I'ma do it again Let me remind you who I am Let me remind you what I can do Let me remind you I did this before now watch this now watch this and here comes the deep part watch this okay what we got here what we got here we got what we got here we got a word we got a vision we got we got we got a seed we got a word, we got a vision, we got a seed. What well, we got here? We got, we got the digestion and the method to how to digest mess for a bowel extraction of a miracle. We got that. <laughs> Woo, Jesus. And, and watch this. And though, let me just back up right here where it says in the, in the sixth verse, and he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. So we, done, we, we ain't gonna do everything right, but because the devil got our rock in his hand and he's pulling and we still believe God, the stuff that we are not doing that is absolutely correct, he's gonna count it towards you for righteousness. Because in the midst of what you're going through, you still daring to believe me. So yeah, you may make a few mistakes, but that's all right. Because as long as you keep saying, Lord, I believe, he's saying you're the righteous. Somebody, did somebody get encouraged right there? 
See, because I came to cancel out that devil that make you think that if you ain't perfect, then you ain't going to get the miracle. Because you know what? You are not perfect. That's why he's raising up more evangelists and teachers for the perfecting, the processing of the church. But God said, as long as you believe in my ability over your life, I'm going to count it to you as righteousness. Then, now, now, here we go. Here we go. And he said, Lord God, now the eighth verse, the eighth verse says, and he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? Now, you got all your methods? I got all your methods wrote down? Now, now what you have the right to do as a human being, as a human being who have never seen God, you have a right to question in the humanistic side of you what what kind of proof God do I have that you gonna do this can I teach this so so you got a word you got a vision you gonna digest it okay you got seed but I still need proof that if I take this faith walk okay listen to this right now in this building I just felt when I said this faith walk I felt something shift in this place because the Lord has caused your heart to grab faith soon as I took that step see y'all gotta know oh Jesus see faith cometh by hearing listen 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 faith cometh by hearing and we always said this way faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God you don't understand what you're saying you're running it too fast you're running the language too fast faith cometh come to Shana faith cometh by hearing but once faith comes by hearing the hearing is still not opened so faith cometh by hearing but the hearing is popped open by the word so while I am teaching your faith in the reputation of my name brought you here but the word has popped open your hearing. Oh, Jesus. So, you are a prime candidate for a successful miracle because now you can hear. You walk in here alive to the spirit but death to the word now that you can hear the word that popped open your hearing you can obey the word that's why the Bible said he that hath a ear let him hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the no 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 not to the church to the church watch this to the church 
to the congregation of events that are going on inside of me. <laughs> Y'all better see this. There's a congregation of things that is happening on the inside of you. Y'all better hear this. There's a lot of things that are running through your spirit. So the spirit of the Lord is talking to the congregation. The stuff that's going on inside of your church. Okay. So he says, what kind of proof? do I have that I'm going to inherit this thing are y'all with me yeah. then he says this now watch this I'm talking about a method for I'm when I tell you that this is a sure thing honey when I say to you that if you take your notes and make you a poster board and put you some of the flowers around it and frame it and put it up in your house and every time you get ready to believe God for something you go by the methods when I tell you it's a guarantee that every time you do it you're going to see a miracle I'm telling you every time every time every time every, it ain't going to never miss it ain't going to never miss he said here what is my proof and then watch this this is what he said to him he said he said and he said unto him Take me an heifer of three years old, and she goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle duck three, watch this, all of these he's saying, three years old. Three years old, which means all items that you are bringing to me, Abram, must walk through the transfiguration of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So by the time that you give it, you are giving it from the realm of the third person spirit. Okay. That's the point. Because if you gave it to me that was one years old, you may have given it in the name of the Father. If you gave it to me when it was two years old, you may have given it in the name of the Son. But I want you to give it so that it's covered by the triune. So you are giving it in honor of me, your father, in respect of my son. And it's being done by the Holy Spirit. So he says, I want you to give me. Uh, where y'all little things when people fall out? Is y'all got some fallout stuff? Bring me that fallout stuff. Bring me y'all fallout rags. There's another one right there. Give me a fallout thing. You know these fallout things is for folk who wear their dresses too short anyway. <laughs> Y'all ain't got to say amen. Y'all know I'm going to cut you. Every time I see you with a dress on up in your throat, I'm going to talk about you. Because you wearing that, you wearing that from the from the from the first move you ain't got to the holy spirit yet because you got to the holy spirit the holy spirit would tell you that's too short to go to church in he said i want you to bring these animals and i want you to sacrifice them and I want you to lay them out. And the way he placed them was in a figure eight. Because the number eight means new beginnings. Now watch this. And he said, I want you to lay them down as a sacrifice. And I am going to walk through your sacrifice and cut covenant with you. Watch this. Promise. He didn't say I promise you. Because a promise says I will if you will. If you keep your part, then I'll keep my part. But a covenant says I will even if you won't. Now watch this. Abram brought 
the sacrifice laid it on the altar okay here go the method get ready to write and as soon as watch this as soon as he laid his sacrifice down the fowl came to eat up the sacrifice okay let me just help you with that one let me help you with that one let me help you with that one I gotta I gotta I gotta, I gotta you gotta you gotta get intense come on for the next for the next five minutes I don't want nobody walking if you gotta leave go leave now because I don't want nothing to move in here when I say this because this is intense this is very 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 vital see because when God required that Abram lay down a sacrifice it had to be a blood sacrifice that's why the whole mess went on between Cain and Abel you know why all that happened because he tried to bring God a sacrifice and he tried to pass off an offering for a sacrifice let me come on watch this let me let me help you let me help you he tried to pass off an offering as a sacrifice because a sacrifice he tried to give God something from the ground that God had cursed and he tried to give God something he had worked for He tried to give God something that was in his ability to give him. And God said that ain't no sacrifice. Because that's your ability. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And so he gave God an offering when God required a sacrifice. And his offering, a offering, a offering is something that you are willing to offer. When I go and buy a house, I make them an offer. That is what I am willing to give. But a sacrifice is something that I don't want to give, that I ain't thinking about giving, that if I thought about giving, it would make me throw up. But God, if you want it, I'm going to give it to you. And that's why God said, I'm not walking through offerings. I'm walking through sacrifices. I can only make a covenant with you when you give me a sacrifice. I can't, I can't get no amens in here now. Let me see what y'all look like over here because I ain't looked at y'all peoples over here. Let me come over here so I, can, so I can see if anybody over here saved or something. Yeah, I think I see a few glows over here. All y'all over. Some of y'all ashy though. Some of y'all need a little breakthrough, but it's all right. We're getting there. Keep on coming back. Cause it's, it's okay. Let me see. Okay. You always got to know what you're fighting. Y'all got to come on this side too. Anybody save over here? Something, something. Say some bark or some some just don't don't sit over there just looking like <laughs> watch this watch this watch this watch this watch this watch this he lays a sacrifice but this is a secret this is a secret when he laid down the sacrifice the fowl came and the buzzards and started to eat up his sacrifice and Abram he got up and just started beating off the trying to keep the keep the buzzers from getting this stuff because they smelt that blood and they, they was trying to eat it up before God can get a chance to walk through it and he up there just fighting and fighting and trying to keep them off and see that's how we are now every time God anoint us and tell us to lay him a sacrificial offering then we turn around and let folk tell you and that's the devil and why you do that and then you go to trying to beat stuff and see what God said was this listen this what he said to Abram he said watch this he was out there fighting and trying to knock the buzzers off and all of a sudden boom God put him out And he went to sleep and you know what the prophecy was on him God was talking to him like he's talking to y'all and he said to Abram go to bed stop staying up all night long worrying about nothing because if I said that I'm gonna walk through it then how can the devil eat it if I gotta walk through it how can the enemy eat up what God is gonna walk through Okay, I'm going to help some of y'all right now. 
And some of y'all think, well, is he just saying it? Just saying, okay, watch this, watch this. He said, I got to help you with this because that is the reason why your miracle have not been a guarantee because you, in every situation that God speaks a word, and listen, I'm going I'm to give you a point. For every vow or promise that the Lord makes you, it is illegal for God to make you a promise and you don't seal the promise with the sacrifice because then you have no proof that God is coming in it. Do you not know if Aunt Maybell come to your house and sit down and start talking to y'all, y'all just talk my coffee and y'all just drink some coffee, oh this is good coffee, and she said, and you know the Lord told me that this morning when I got up, I was just looking in the word and God began to give me a scripture, and do you not know that if she gives you one scripture, that she's not supposed to leave your house without you sowing a sacrifice into her life, because then God has no business, he doesn't have to keep that word, because there's no covenant between you, you just heard it, but what makes it covenant to the point that God is obligated to do exactly what he said he gonna do you have to lay a sacrifice for God to walk in and that way I don't care what the devil does God gotta do it because you have sealed it with a sacrifice see understand this legally speaking when we come to church and we say, thank you, Lord, for being here, and everybody get up, and the choir sang, and then they say, now we're going to get the tithes and offering. Legally, you're supposed to collect the tithes because that's not a gift that already belonged to God. But then, I believe, based on what I've read, that the preacher should preach, and then you make the decision whether or not you want to obligate God to that word in your life by laying a sacrifice after the word is preached therefore you can walk away out of the church knowing without a shadow of a doubt that God is going to do exactly what he said he was going to do because I laid him down a sacrifice it's getting heavy in here now this thing is heavy See, see, watch this, 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 watch this. Abram, Abram laid God down a sacrifice. Watch this, y'all. Method to a miracle. He put him to sleep. When he woke up, God took a torch while he was asleep. While you in a coma, being delirious and can't see. See, what happened was this. Remember when the Bible said to him, fear not? Come on, bringing my lesson to a close. Stay with me, stay with me. Remember when he said, fear not? You know why he told him, fear not? Because on down in the rest of the chapter, it says, and a gross darkness fell on the earth, and Abram found himself sitting in the dark. Now, what am I trying to say to y'all? Before you gonna see the miracle, it's got to get dark. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. Hallelujah. It's going to get black till it's going to look like you are sitting in the dark and God done left you without a promise. But I'm going to tell you what God is doing. Touch somebody and say, he got to test you in the dark, baby. You got to learn how to praise God when the lights is out. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. I said you got to learn how to praise God in the dark because you already got a word that says that it's going to get dark. Let me help you. It got dark. But let me help y'all with something. And some y'all forgot, some y'all forgot, some y'all forgot. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Something you forgot. It got dark. But the sacrifice had not been moved. In the dark, it was still laying there. 
So what you supposed to do is look for the dark. When somebody tell you you still believe in God for the house, when it's gonna come to pass? Girl, see, it can't really come to pass that I see the dark. It's dark coming. You can call up and say, girl, it's dark. The folks said they done sold it. The bank told me no. They said my credit, I didn't have enough credit. Girl, I can't come up with the rest of the dog down payment. Well, why you sound so happy? Because, girl, don't you know it's the dog? See, because you got to understand that, 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 that the flaming torch got to come when it's dark. See, you can't see the brightness of the torch of the word of God until it get dark. See, what you do is you don't sit in the dark and cry. You don't complain. You sit in the dark looking for the torch, looking for the flaming word. Because you say, I don't know when God is coming. But one thing I know is dark enough. And while it's dark, I'm looking for a word from the Lord. Because I know he promised. So, said, well, how, how's everything coming? Ooh. It's going real good. Girl, they sold a house last week. You know the house God told me he's gonna give me? Oh, girl, it's going real good. You know they laid me off my job. Girl, it's going good. What, 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 what you so happy about? Cause God made me a promise. Y'all ain't saying that. Because, because my sacrifice has sealed it.